Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we want to talk about what is a type system, right? We've we've all seen types and programming, and I think that a lot of people uh, don't really give, I guess, enough credence to what a type is and how it actually works and what are the differences between uh, types and the system and the programming languages that they use. If you've ever heard of like Python, it's a dynamically typed language. Um, some people say JavaScript is an untyped language. And a uh, language like C-sharp is strongly typed. So we're going to look at really what do those type systems mean and, and, um, and what are the differences. So when we first look at what is a type system, if we look at the Wikipedia definition, it says, in programming languages, a type system is a collection of rules that assign a property called type to various constructs a computer program consists of, such as variables, expressions, functions, or modules. So really, it's just, it's just a set of rules. So if we have a piece, like a type here, this is just a particular defined type, then you have um, the string, an int, a bool, which is just true or false. So I'm sure you guys have seen all of those different types that are in languages. And those are all predefined. You don't actually have to uh, define what those are. If you're programming in Python, Python knows how to handle them. Um, C Sharp, JavaScript, Java, whatever you're using. So essentially, if I declare a type to be a string, which is really just a variable. So if I create a variable that is, you know, my string, or it might be a sentence or a paragraph or even a web page of HTML content, either way, it is just a type of string. And then the rules that come into play are what can be done with that particular type in order for it to, you know, do different things. Like, so you have built-in um, methods that are on available on that type. So they're they're part of the rule system there, like print, split concatenate. Um, so that is, you know, just applies to actual strings. So a string is a different type than an int. And you'll notice pretty early on in programming that you can't combine a string and an int without some sort of forced coercion because they're two separate types and they don't mix together because they're not part of the rules of the construct of the language. So if I have two different types, you have an int over here, and then you have a string on the on the right. The int has built-in rules associated with its type that it can add and subtract since it's dealing with integers and numbers. And the string has the ability to split and print. And just so you guys know, in most programming languages, you can also print an int as well, but let's just pretend you can't. And if I try to just add these two together, it's not going to work you're going to have a sad face. So it's going to throw a compiler exception because you violated the rules of the programming language. There are two different types. They don't mix together. And that was defined by the programming language itself. So essentially, um, there's a very you know academic um, definition and, uh, of type systems and how they all work and everything. But uh, for the most part, you just have to know that um, you know types are real things in the programming language and it's real things that the compiler needs to understand in order for the programmer uh, for the program to actually execute so there are certain things that you can and can't do with with different types they're there to help you um, and if used correctly they're you know they're very they're obviously been beneficial and they're extremely important to programming itself so you you really quickly when you're getting started run into okay I can't add a, an int and a string and I have to you know either cast uh, my int to a string or cast my string to an int uh, assuming that that it would actually work so um, those bring up different discussions but essentially we just want to look at um, you know from a high level view what is a type system so programming languages can have both strong and weak types. And this guy's got a terrible looking arm here. So you can see the strongly typed language is much stronger. But anyway, guys, the, the, the thing is about strong and weak, weak type languages is there's actually no uh, definitive uh, really proof of what is considered a strong or a weak type language. Um, but there are kind of, uh, I guess, status quos when it comes to defining a weak uh, versus a strongly typed language. Let's first look at what a um, strong language is. C sharp is a strongly typed language and what that means is that when you declare a method, and that's what this is here, you actually have to state what type of type is being returned from that method. And you can see that that is the first thing. It's called the method declaration. So it's saying that this method is going to return an int. That's the first argument that's passed. 
And then you have the name of the actual method, and then it also takes in a parameter, which is also an int. So it'll do some processing, and then it's going to return uh, the input times the input. Now, the reason why it's doing that, uh, that it can do multiplication, is because there's a certain set of procedures and, and, like I said, rules that the type int follows, and it allows the int to be able to multiply, divide, things like that, because that's what's built into the language. But it, uh, C Sharp is considered a strongly typed language that every variable that you use, and you can see like int is a, a declared variable down here where it says int input equals i, that is an int that gets passed into it. So you can obviously assign one int to another without problems. Uh, but what that is doing there, how it's saying, hey, I have this new variable, and it's going to be an int, uh, but because it's a strongly typed language, it makes you put the int first. So um, if you've ever done C Sharp, there's ways that you can use the var keyword and all that stuff. I'm not getting into that in case you guys have any sort of C-sharp background, but um, you can see here that um, you know C-sharp is definitely a strongly typed language. So let's look at the, what is considered a weakly typed language. So in Perl, in all its glorious wisdom, will actually allow you to de declare a variable here. So they have a variable x and it's actually a string 4t and then they have a another variable y that's equal to 3. So this is a string, this is an int, and you can actually print these two variables, so you can concatenate the two which, or multiply, and then you end up getting this string, like this added string. So Perl, because it's weakly typed, didn't complain about the fact that X and Y are different types and didn't try to throw uh, an error, unless you're in strict mode. If you're in strict mode, it will throw an error, um, but a lot of people operate in Perl without using strict mode. They like the flexibility. and um, and that's known as magic, by the way, and that's not good for the most part. You don't want your programming language doing some weird stuff like that because uh, that can obviously have major ripples through the rest of the execution if um, you accidentally add a string to an end. Because typically you would never do that in the real world, and any sort of programming language should complain about it because at least in, in the years that I've been programming, I've never needed to do something like that. Um, I mean, there are times that you do want to actually turn like a, a string and number into an int or uh, an int into a string, but I've never, you know, wanted to combine the two uh, without any sort of complaint with a with a result like that. That's that's to, that's insane insanity in my book. So the next one up though is that we're going to talk about Python because Python is considered to be a dynamically strong type language. A lot of people think that Python is a weakly type language. Because some of the confusion um, with strong and weak typing is that I can just, I don't have to declare uh, what a variable is before I actually declare it. So a lot of people think that that is actually what is a requirement, but it's not. So in Python's example, we have three methods here, or not three methods, but three variables. One's an int, one's a floating point, and the other one's a string. So if we printed all these out, they all have the print functionality because their type allows for it. But you cannot add um, counter plus name without being uh, explicit, without doing a casting argument. Python will complain it won't allow you to do that because it is strongly typed. When you declare name to be a string, it's a string, and that's its string type. If you then try to add counter to string, it's not going to work because it's you know counter is an int and, and name is a string. So I'm going to sum up this video by saying that when you have a type system, which most programming languages have some sort of type system, its main goal is to establish the rules for assigning types to any sort of object. And objects are just like basically little bits of memory uh, in your computer system. So that is really all it is. It's it's a rule system that says, hey, strings do this, strings uh, get this, uh, you know, th these rules, uh, ints get these rules. If I have somebody trying to add an int to a string, I need to either... Uh, establish which type it needs to be because I can't just magically make a string int doesn't exist um, so that is really what a type system consists of just trying to figure out the type if if, uh, if if it doesn't know or be explicit about the type so that's that's it guys uh, thanks for watching have a good day bye